the very first memory I have is of being really scared, uh, and I didn't know why I was scared, and feeling like something was going to go wrong in, in any particular moment. And that feeling persisted throughout my whole life and intensified uh, in my 20s. And I sank into uh, a deep depression even after having four children. And they ended up um, going through probably three or four years where it was um, really searching for something but didn't know what that was. I'd never heard about awakening, didn't know what that was. And over time, um, it began to become clear that whatever I was looking for wasn't to be found in my outer life. I had a good family, good uh, business at the time, all the things that anyone could want, and yet still felt really empty inside. And eventually, as part of healing from my depression, and um, I discovered meditation and dived into, into that, found some kind of peace, some deep sense of contentment. And for the first time in my entire life, that sense of dread or fear had disappeared, just momentarily uh, for that first time ever. So I began to um, try to find out everything I could about what had happened, why, why that changed, and why it had come back again, that feeling of fear. I began to research different spiritual pathways and came across this term, awakening, enlightenment, began to try to understand what that is. Uh, eventually, um, 15, 20 years later, came to recognize that it is uh, when we're not believing our thoughts anymore. Thoughts might still be going on, but the fear was uh, coming from believing my thoughts, believing that I was just a, a person or someone who was um, going about my life. And I came to see I was a lot more than that. I am uh, uh, infinite and that over a period of five years that began to uh, stabilize for want of a better word I had to look at everything that was coming up in the way of that the sense of um, not being a good enough parent the sense of uh, this feeling of inadequacy in the in in my core I had to really look at that and investigate that and contemplate that and eventually the peace became uh, stable, uh, effortless, and even joy and love, um, sometimes even bliss, deep sense of everything being okay, uh, feeling at home, feeling safe, feeling that I can love myself, I like myself, which is something that was not possible before for me. Probably four or five years of, uh, from a first kind of glimpse to uh, something bigger about myself, to living as that stably, living as that effortlessly. Uh, and, that, and that was that process of uh, looking at things that were in contradiction to that, um, fears and insecurities. It's about four or five years. Um, after about 15 years of trying to figure out what awakening was. There was this very ordinary moment where I kind of recognized that I was something different than I thought. I couldn't find myself as a person when I looked, and it was quite shocking. It took me a while to come to terms with that, to accept that, and to keep looking and looking again, re realizing that I wasn't who I thought I was and uh, investigating that. It took about four, four or five years before um, I just noticed that my life was different, very different. There was just this constant peace that was there the whole time. And no matter what happened in my normal life, the highs and the lows, they didn't impact upon that peace. It was just constantly there in the background. It's very, uh, very common that people have some kind of seeing that they're not a someone at all, that they are uh, 
uh, beyond the body, beyond the mind, inclusive of those. But then there is uh, the same old thought structure in our thinking, our thought process starts right back up again in the same old way. And um, most people, uh, everyone I've met needs this repetition of seeing over and over again to begin to override our old ways of thinking. There's this huge myth in awakening uh, that I, I believed that if I had a big enough seeing, it would just totally override all that old way of seeing myself. And it just wasn't like that. I had to look again and again. I find that with most uh, beings that I come across as well, they, they need to look again. Um, using uh, direct self-inquiry, just actually looking to see what we really are, what we actually are rather than thinking about ourselves. And that begins to override this old way of thinking. You can't really see who you actually are and keep thinking um, in terms of our old ways that we're someone who was born living a life and then at some point we're going to die. And that that's all there is to us. Self-inquiry is um, a really simple thing that not a lot of people understand initially. Um, it's not a thought process. It's an actual looking and seeing. So if I look and try to see what I am right now, who I am right now, I can find a body here. There's a body sitting in this chair. There might be some thoughts, some emotions. But the one that all those belong to, who's using this body, who's having those thoughts, when we actually try to find it, it was quite surprising to me that it wasn't a someone. It wasn't that Helen wasn't a person in the way that I had thought, uh, not a limited separate being or entity. And what I did find was <clears throat> found um, this uh, formlessness, this no thingness, this not a thing yetness that was very rich and full, and w w that is the fundamental aspect of what we are. And it's very different to what we think we're going to find, and quite shocking sometimes because we think we are a someone sitting inside this body, and when we actually look rather than thinking about uh, who we are we find something very, very different. It's a very direct technique and um, very simple, just actually looking and trying to find out what we are. Usually human beings just go to a thought process, let me think about who I am. That just reinforces this sense of being a someone on a, on a journey to try to reach awakening. When we actually look, we find I am that uh, infinite space of awakening already. And that begins to shift our whole paradigm of how we see ourselves, who we think we are. It's more like a, a scanning, a searching. Uh, we are here, that much we know, we do exist. But what do we exist as? So if I try to find out what I am, I have to discount uh, temporarily everything that will disappear about me, my body, my thoughts, my emotions, and then trying to find what's left. And the, what's left um, is not a thing, it's not an object, it's not a someone. It's more like the, the space in this room than an object in this room. So it's just actual searching. Can I find someone who's sitting inside this body? Am I actually what I think I am? When I really try to find out where I am, this question for me was really, really powerful. Where am I? And there was a feeling that I am just here, but when I actually looked, uh, I couldn't find anything that I could call myself any object. It just wasn't there. I really don't know what I am. I am some kind of um, mystery, 
something that I can't see, something with my physical eyes, something I can't touch with my hands, and yet very much real, very much here, very much stable and present, something that is not a thing. We don't really have a word for it. In, we, we can only describe it in negation, formless, uh, formlessness. But that which we are, it can't be harmed. It, it wasn't born. It's not going to die. Our body was born and will die. But that which we are essentially, our fundamental essence, is indestructible. It's not, it's not a thing that began and it's not going to uh, reach an end. It will continue beyond the body and it was here before the body arrived. It's not something that we can grasp uh, with our mind. We can think about it, but it doesn't really give us an experience. Self-inquiry is a direct experience of looking, trying to find a someone, and then finding there isn't anything that I can find about me. There isn't any, um, <clears throat> any part of my, myself that's an object, a more subjective experiential. There's experiencing happening right now, but there isn't anyone who is experiencing. And that's the, the common belief that we have, that my, what my eyes are taking in right now is reporting to a central someone. When we actually try to find that someone, it's just not there and never has been. Our belief in uh, the idea that we are someone keeps it alive, keeps it seeming real. As someone with problems, someone on a pathway, someone on a journey. It was, um, there was a period of uh, adjustment of examining these old ideas that came up. Can I still believe that I am uh, only a mother of four children or a sister or a daughter? Can I still look at my life in the same way as I used to? If I am not a someone and I am uh, infinite, then my whole paradigm has to be kind of examined and that happened for me bit by bit because all of our thought structure is based on this idea that I am a someone um, and that everyone else is separate to me, outside of me, different to me. And that had to be examined uh, in all of my relationships, all of my uh, areas of my life. Everything over this period of four or five years came up to be examined from what I had seen myself to actually be rather than what I had thought about myself. Could I still keep believing that I wasn't um, a good enough parent or um, that I didn't know what I was here for and all of that stuff from this new understanding and seeing of who I actually am? So it took a while to investigate all that and see that the old thought structure just wasn't true, wasn't, um, wasn't who I really am, that my mind was talking about some old idea of who I am and didn't really have any relevance to who I actually am, what I actually am, which is very different. It was like a, a journey of self-love, actually, seeing that all the things, the doubts and the fears, uh, insecurities I'd had about myself just uh, weren't true. and in my day-to-day -day experience it was a fullness a richness in relationships uh, with with my children with my uh, with everyone in my life there was an intimacy a depth there that just wasn't possible before because if I was meeting someone thinking I am uh, someone Helen is a someone then there's this thing going on in the background for most human beings like uh, do you like me uh, Am I you know, going to be useful? Am I going to be safe? And all of that had stopped over these years. That There was just an ability to actually show up and meet people, uh, meet my experience from a place of openness and curiosity. And that blossomed into joy. 
almost like being a child again, just being able to um, actually experience my reality, my, my life, uh, and to feel at home in my life as a human being also. That I wasn't any of those roles in particular. My, my body was being a parent and being a sister and all of those things. But um, I was watching that happening from this place of stability where uh, nothing that happened in my experience could impact that. So it was this shift over very gradually from uh, this background of fear, this insecurity, um, to confidence, clarity, peace, joy, a uh, deep sense of love began to emerge from, from my own body and mind and for everyone else's because they're not who they think they are either. They are already something much more uh, profound and wonderful. So it was a shift over, but a very different way of living. Um, very beautiful, very spontaneous and natural. If we can just stop believing this idea that you wake up once and that's it, and recognize that it's more of a process, a gradual unfolding, then we can go through that without suffering at all. We won't expect ourselves to be any particular way in any moment. We won't expect ourselves to be completely free of the mind right now. And there is some kind of um, revelation in that, that it really doesn't matter if I go back to believing something. Uh, if I'm watching for that and expecting for that, I won't blame myself when it happens. Consciousness is always going to be the determining factor. There's this desire when it shows up as a human being to experience life uh, not through the lens of thought, not through the filter of our uh, ideas about reality. And it's always driving towards that. So there's always going to be an expansion in progress of experiencing life ever more clearly from this place of being free. So in any particular moment, we're either believing a thought or we're living free. And when we're living free of thoughts, uh, it feels so good that that becomes, it deepens the desire. I want this, and I want this more often, and I want this um, effortlessly and continuously. Consciousness is always uh, the driving force behind that awareness, consciousness, whatever we call our real selves.